you are constantly letting God down. With every new day, He has a fresh and full slate of hopes and dreams for your life, but by the end of each day, He is facing the ugly reality, that you have failed to be all that He hoped you would. Once again you have not lived up to God's expectations. Worst of all, I hate feeling like I've disappointed God. Maybe you feel the same. For many of you, the reality of God is an ongoing disappointment with you is almost unbearable. He loves you, He died for you, and He saved you. You cherish your relationship with Him, and you know what it cost Jesus, to make that relationship possible. You feel the least you could do is not break His heart every day. And if you think you have failed Him, disappointed Him, or made Him feel like He cannot rely on you, or that He made a mistake in trusting you, that thought can be devastating. For some of you, it can be the deal breaker in your walk with God. If you feel like you have really let God down, you may never muster up the courage to turn back to Him. Sound familiar? It does to me. Painfully familiar. The theological concept of forgiveness is much more comprehensive than most of us realize. When God offers forgiveness through Christ, He doesn't make a small or limited proposal. What He offers is a radical, sweeping removal of every sin you have committed or will commit. Several verses in the Bible teach this, but let me highlight just one of them. In Romans 5, Paul taught that Jesus died for us even, while knowing just how sinful we are. He wrote, But God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus wasn't confused about his mission or the deep need of those he came to save. He understood that his sacrificial death on the cross was for the sake of those who did not deserve it. He died for sinners. The worst of the worst. Jesus went to the cross fully aware that he was taking the place of murderers, adulterers, liars, thieves, swindlers, rapists, extortionists, kidnappers, child abusers, gossips, drunkards, drug dealers, prostitutes, assassins, terrorists, pornographers, and dictators. Nothing. No sin. Escaped his notice. Name your worst moment as a human. Name the time when you were most selfish, most sinful, most harmful to others. Or perhaps there will be a time in the future when, God forbid, you are at your worst. In both cases, Jesus died for that sin. Past, present, future. Jesus died for it all. And because of that profound reality of his forgiveness, there's no way we can ever do anything that will somehow shock or surprise God. Consider Peter. He was passionate about his loyalty to Christ and was in some ways the first disciple to really grasp the true nature of Jesus. But he also had a cuss first, shoot it second, and ask questions later philosophy that often got him in trouble. Peter was a complete mess, but he was also the disciple Jesus nicknamed the Ruck. Do you think Jesus invited Peter into his inner circle without fully knowing that he was going to misstep, misspeak, and even fail on several occasions? Do you think Jesus was surprised when Peter wanted to call down fire on the Samaritans, or when he fell asleep in Jesus' most critical hour of need? No way. Jesus fully vetted Peter. He knew everything about him, and he invited him to be his disciple anyway. The most obvious example of how Jesus understood Peter's propensity for failure is found in Jesus' prediction of Peter's denials. You probably know the scene. Jesus warned Peter. Simon. Simon. Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, Yeah, right. Actually, that's what I would have said. Here's what Jesus really said. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Jesus was under no delusions about Peter's struggles. He warned Peter in advance of his coming colossal failure. He also told Peter that he had already prayed about the entire situation, and he knew Peter would bounce back and become a significant figure in the post-resurrection church. 
So was he surprised when Peter told the servant girl, that he did not know Jesus? Absolutely not. Jesus saw it coming long before it happened, had prepared for it, and knew exactly how things would play out in the end. And yet, please don't miss this. Jesus called Peter to follow him anyway. Jesus knew everything about Peter. His strengths and weaknesses, his passion, his lack of good judgment, and his impulsiveness. But knowing all of that did not keep Jesus from wanting to be with him. The same is true for you. We need to repent of our bad theology and of believing this lie about our relationship with God. God is way too big and all-knowing for us to ever surprise Him or let Him down. To assume otherwise diminishes His greatness and power. We need to accept the biblical fact that God knows everything about us and chose to love us anyway. Then we need to rest in that knowledge. Part of the yoke of Jesus is our being freed from the constant fear that comes from trying never to let down a holy God. The pressure is off, the tension gone. Jesus' death on the cross settled once and for all the debate of whether we can somehow disappoint our Heavenly Father. Our standing as believers before God has forever been confirmed by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Nothing can change that. So rest in the peace of knowing that God has already accepted you. Follow Jesus passionately and energetically. Know that when you fall, and you will, your loving Heavenly Father will be the first to pick you up. You will never hear Him say, I'm so disappointed in you.